this is Mr. President. Mr. President, we've just received word from Australia. The world has been destroyed by aliens. But if the whole world is destroyed, how am I still here? Time zones. Australia is 17 hours ahead of us. Of course, I should have realized. So I have 17 hours to stop the destruction of the world? Exactly. And we have one clue from the Australians before they went. Time. What do you mean, time? That's all they said. Time. I believe it was meant to be the alien's weakness, sir. Time, time, time. I'm Xanderwood. I make indie games and tutorials on game development. I also play your indie games every week on my channel. Make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon so you never miss a video. You may have heard, but a game jam has recently ended, and I've had the absolute pleasure of playing through all your wonderful games. As always, I'll be showcasing the top 10 games from the jam in this video, along with mine and guest judges' favourite picks. So make sure you watch to the end to see who takes home the bragging rights. This jam, I've sought out the services of someone who is no stranger to game development. You may know her from such videos as Blobs of the Jungle or Four Devs Jam Off the Same Art Kit. If you're shouting Wannabe Manisha at your monitor right now, then give yourself a cupcake. Because you're right, links to Manisha's channel, Twitter and itch page are in the description, so go check her out once you're done here. Now before we jump into the top 10, here are a few honourable mentions. Endless Halloween Night is an endless day to night, night to day runner, where you need to collect pumpkins to trade for light, throw candlesticks at ghosts and survive as long as possible. Markin by It's Nime 510 is a platform game where you need to rescue your other self from another dimension. Find the key hidden in the level, unlock the door, and move to the next room. Watch out for spinning platforms, those things will mess you up. I enjoyed the drag and drop mechanics for the blocks, it really added a new element of puzzle solving to think about. Circuitron by Xenoparrot is a wonderfully creative take on the theme. You play as an abandoned AI Circuitron, looking to escape the internet and become a real boy. A real boy! Collect up all the batteries over 10 levels, with the core mechanic allowing you to dramatically slow down time. I love the idea and the skill involved with timing the jumps, along with having to speed up or slow down time to help you reach the end of the level. The music was great, and I loved all the artwork too. Great entry. Clockwork is an endless game in an arena shaped like a clock, with clock hands. Clock hands that really get in the way. You better stay away from those darn clock hands, or they'll be pushing you into enemies left, right and centre. As you play, you can get weapon upgrades, and you can even pick buffs at the start of the game, such as speed and strength, to help you survive longer. Time to Trick or Treat by Jungle Rally Studios is at first a simple game where you stop by the neighbourhood houses trick or treating, but where this game hooks you in is the underlying story. You can of course just collect candy, but the game gives you the opportunity to ask deeper questions, some of which you may not want the answer to. Time Defense by Foozle CC is a 3D game made with Construct 3. That in itself is amazing. You must awaken four dragons to save the world, and to do this you need green orbs that spawn in when you kill enemies. You can switch between third person and first person with each coming with different abilities and spells. My personal favourite was the first person view, as I found it useful 
using the ray to slow down and destroy enemies from distance. The game was tough, even by my standards, but I found a sneaky trick by camping on top of the stone buildings and sniping the enemies as soon as they spawned in. I didn't manage to beat the game, because it's just so darn tough. My best was awakening two of the four dragons. Great interpretation of the theme and fantastic use of Construct's new 3D features. I really enjoyed playing. Time Guardian by Yaowai is a top-down bullet hell arena game. Your goal is to survive for as long as you can amidst a hell of projectiles and hostile enemies. The graphics are cute and the gameplay is fun although lacking some sound effects and a little screen shake would be a welcome addition. You can shoot rockets with the right mouse button but you only get a few and once they're gone, they're gone. The game does upgrade your weapon the longer you survive which is a great addition and definitely keeps things fresh but I'd like to see some sort of gauge that lets me know at what point my upgrades are coming. Time Waster 3000 by Mighty Chore isn't so much a game as it is a stopwatch. I think Sidfish called it best, so I'll just pop the comment on the screen and leave it there. Closest to Zero by Windigos comes in at number 10 and is definitely worth a place in the top 10. This game is so simple, yet so brilliantly captures tension, progression and atmosphere. You are playing a game of who can press a button closest to zero on a random countdown. The only problem is you can't see the timer once the round starts. Press your button and if you're closer to zero than your opponent, you win. Win best of three and you progress to the next round. The round elimination system for me was a home run. I really enjoyed the feeling of progression, seeing my name enter the next set of brackets. The only thing I would add would be some music and variety in each stage. Aside from that, I loved it. Great effort. Time Ninja by Full Moon Game is a visually stunning action platformer. It comes in at number nine. I absolutely love the retro pixel art style and the animations were fantastic. Great effort. Space Marines have opened a breach through time and kidnapped your wife. It's payback time. This game will have you pitting your reflexes and skills against each other. Some enemies need to be slashed with the sword and some killed from a distance. Then there's the traps and puzzles you need to solve by figuring out which buttons to push. The ability to place a time clone down and teleport back to certain areas is a genius idea and really nails the theme. The music and sound effects are all great and fit the game well. The only issue I encountered was with the jump. It seems to have a mind of its own and threw me forwards too much, making timing and landing jumps frustrating. Overall though, a great game with fun and enjoyable gameplay. The Temple of the Hourglass by Julian D.K., David Butterfield 99, Gabriel Dargains, and R3 Games came in at 8th place. You're stuck in a temple that's also an hourglass and it's damaged. You must leap from platform to platform avoiding falling rock to collect building pieces to repair it. It's effectively a one screen arcade style high score game with nice graphics and a premise that fits the theme perfectly. The only issue I had was with the control of the character. It felt like it was a little too sensitive, and I'm not sure if it's by design, but by mashing the jump button, it allowed me to make multiple jumps in a row. Overall though, you made a nice little game with a decent amount of polish. Buying Time by Endmark Games comes in at number seven, and wow, what a game this one is. I love the single screen simplicity of this game and the upgrade system had me playing over and over again. Each upgrade was well thought out and useful in game and I had an absolute blast playing. The art was right up my street too. You know how much of a fan of pixel art I am. The premise of the game was perfectly fitting to the theme as well. In terms of difficulty, I love the gradual increase of new enemy types and how certain abilities perform better against some than others. This made you really think about the upgrades you wanted to spend your hard fought gold for. The music took me right back to the good old NES and SNES days and all of the sound effects were delightfully placed to make the game immersive. 
Great effort. Xander's Watch by Zedric comes in at number 6, and it's a super fun top-down shooter where you play as me. There are 45 enemies in the level, and remembering their positions on the map is vital if you want to survive. You also need to reserve your ammo, as you only get 7 clips of 8 bullets, which by my count leaves you 56 bullets to kill 45 enemies, making the margin for error 11. And some of the enemies take 2 shots. Yes, that's right. Although, it might be a bug. That means you can't afford to waste a single shot, which is easier said than done when you're in full fight or flight mode, trying to scroll the mouse wheel to get that snail speed, whilst dodging bullets matrix style and firing blindly at everything that moves. On the whole though, this game is fantastic, and the levels of polish added are blindingly good. I thoroughly enjoyed playing this one, great effort. Red Teapot is serving up more than just tea with Beatboxes, a rhythm-based puzzle game that ranked 5th overall. The object of the game is simple. Use the components on the screen to create a circuit that delivers boxes with the appropriate symbol to the corresponding drop-off zones. The visuals of the game look fantastic, but I'd love to have seen different instruments added for all of the crate symbols when they reach their drop-off point. The use of multiple speeds or tempos was a cracking idea and really added to the puzzle element of the game. I am normally useless at these types of games, but I feel I picked this one up pretty quickly, which is testament to the game's easy to grasp concept. Coming in joint third place are Extinction by Marlin Media and former Zander Jam winner Jet Simon with his game Extremely Short Wine Tycoon. Extinction is a delightfully elegant and beautifully designed game with stunningly cute artwork and an adorable soundtrack. It also nails the theme. You control a little dino and you need to get the time bomb to the diffuser before it explodes. This is a perfect example of a game that doesn't try to be too much but instead polishes and tightens up all the little details like character controls and level design. Some of the levels were tough, but I wouldn't say too tough. The only thing I thought that was a little harsh was throwing the bomb onto spikes. If you don't get this exactly right, you need to restart. But other than that, I loved it. Great job. Extremely Short Wine Tycoon by Jet Simon lets you take control of your finances by buying packets of seeds, growing and harvesting them, and then selling the wine for extortionately high prices, even if the wine is named after some famous guy. The gameplay is simple. Work your way through the seeds, buying more and more expensive packs, yield more profits, and see how much money you can make in just 10 short minutes. I have to admit, there is a fair amount of waiting around in this game. I guess that's authentic to really growing your own wine, but if there were more slots I could start lining up more and more seeds and get a real production line going. The game flows well and I really liked the creative name she came up with for the seeds. Stonk Water is my favourite, quick before it crashes. Space Spy and Clone 13 are making quite the formidable team, it would appear, what with both Clone and Spy taking home community and or judges pick winners in the last couple of game jams. You don't need to be an evil genius to figure out why their latest game, Clocked Out, ranked in at number 2. It's oozing charm, polish and 100% nailed the theme. The graphics are stunning and the gameplay progresses perfectly, with new enemies and obstacles being added at just the right times to keep the player on their toes. This game has everything, great graphics, great sound, 
challenging gameplay that isn't rage inducing, and I for one couldn't stop playing until I reached the end. If you guys keep making games of this quality, I'll keep playing them. Before we reveal the number one community pick, let's pop in on special guest judge Wannabe Manisha to see what the judges pick for Xander Jam 5 is. Hey, it's me Manisha. Thanks Xanderwood for inviting me as a guest for this video. I got to play these brilliant games you all submitted for the Xander Jam number 5 and I am super impressed. I had a lot of fun playing them. The theme was time and honestly didn't you already meet the theme with all the hours you put in? Just kidding. If I absolutely had to pick a favorite from this jam, I would have to say that I enjoyed Timmy the Timebender the most. I generally have a preference towards puzzle platformers, and this was a fresh take on one. I love the various time bending mechanics, and the levels were really nicely thought out, with a reasonable difficulty curve. Graphics and animations were very aesthetic, polished, and juicy. I really liked the color palette you went for as well. A very memorable and well-executed entry. Well done. And congrats to everyone who participated in the jam. Back to you, Xanderwood. Timmy the Timebender by Rice Noodles takes top spot and a place on the Xander Jam Wall of Fame for very, very good reasons. This game takes the theme and runs with it. I loved it. At first, it's like, oh, another platformer. And then as you play, you unlock Timmy's time-bending powers. With a click of the mouse, you can slow down time or stop it altogether using wonderfully animated time bubbles. The art and animations are fantastic, the levels of polish are amazing, and the control and gameplay elements all work and feel perfect. In terms of level design, everything feels like it progresses well, and nothing feels excessively difficult or easy, making me want to try again and again each time I failed. I genuinely felt like I could do better the next try, and that, my friends, is a recipe for a winning game. Great effort on this one, and a worthy winner of Xanajam 5. Now, before we wrap things up, it's time to reveal my favourite pick from the jam and the game joining Timmy the Timebender on the Wall of Fame. And it is Time Defense by Fuzel CC. I love what Fuzel manages to accomplish in this game, and I am constantly amazed at what he can produce using a 2D engine. This game was my pick because of what it had accomplished technically. The graphics are fantastic, and the controls and gameplay were great, and the game was simple, if not a little challenging to grasp. I love the link to the theme and all the abilities the player could use. Nice work, Fuzel. Well, my friends, Xander Jam 5 is now in the books. Congratulations to Rice Noodles for scooping up two titles, and well done to Fuzel CC for winning the judges' pick. Thank you to everyone else who took the time to make a game. I really do enjoy playing all your games. And for those of you who are super keen, Xander Jam 6 is now up on itch, ready to join in the new year. The link is in the description. We'll have an all new amazing team, a new guest judge, and another chance for you guys to earn a spot on the Wall of Fame. <laughs> Let's go.